it's always so amazing to me on the other, you know, I don't, I don't know if you have the same experience, maybe watching yourself, you have this experience, but you watch these characters that you grow so attached to. And then to be speaking to the actor who brings it to life, uh, sometimes surreal, you know, it just, you know, it, it is. Just, uh, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, a. Uh, <clears throat> I feel the same thing when I, it's one of the reasons why, honestly, I don't love to watch, to know too much about the actors that I love because I, I love that kind of shock factor where you're like, oh, that's who they really are. Like I just, it's so great when you get immersed uh, in a character and it's always, and I find it really hard to watch people who I know because I'm just, I have realized, I just, even if it's like, you know, sort of like, some horror film I'm sitting there with a huge grin on my face I'm like oh my god they're doing it so <laughs> uh, this is sort of odd kind of thing of the difference between watching people and meeting people in real life right it's like it's, mm -hmm. it's it's a weird thing yeah yeah and you have to have that disconnect if you're not disconnected then you're not going to get into it and which is what's great about a great performance is you completely forget who you're watching um Thanks. which yeah. actually Kind of something I wanted to touch upon is you're such a chameleon that I barely recognized you. So I saw you in the White Lotus, and then I saw you in this, and I was like, "Which one's he?" I'm like, "Oh, that's him." And it's not just the way, you know, your your looks and the way you're dressed, and you know, you're dressed a different era, and so and so, uh, and uh, so forth. But it's the the way you carry yourself. Uh, I was just wondering, how do you prepare to play a character like like Nick, especially one who's based on a real person? Well, for, first of all, I think, you know, I've, I've had this sort of, <clears throat> I've been sort of gifted this period in my life where I have choices and I've never had choices before. And I feel like that's one of the things with actors is, you know, you get seen in a certain way, um, you know, for, for understandable reasons. And then you those kind of roles keep coming your way. And, and most of the time, most of my career, I've never had choices. You're like, well, here's my next job, you know? Um, and then you know, when something happens like White Lotus and a lot of people see it and, and, and suddenly there's, a, you know, there's, um, there's choices, you can, if you want to, then like try and, you know, well, let's see what I can do and let's like try and surprise people. And, and well, it's not even about surprising people, that, that's part of it, but um, just like, what can I do that's interesting? I feel so fortunate to be in this position of being like oh my god if I've got choices then what can I do and what's an interesting sort of turn to take now and what you know what what kind of character am I interested uh in kind of trying to bring to life now that I possibly have the opportunity to you know <laughs> to do that um what's 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 a different choice from what I've just done and how can I sort of stretch myself and and that's the one of the enjoyable things about being an actor is you can play all sorts of different characters. And I'm in this, you know, very sort of privileged position to be able to do that at the moment because I have choices. So sorry for that long winded first response, but. No, no, I love it. With, with Nick, um, you know, it's a real person. And th this was also like, a, it was a, a cool sort of, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, hybrid where, Nick Denoy is a real person. So I had all these great reference points, video reference points, you know, of this guy. Um, not a ton of stuff about his personal life, but really like he's such an amazing character. And and also his this children's TV show that he created, Unicorn Tales, you can mm -hmm. see it on YouTube. And I just fell in love with it and watched it all. And so there was great reference points, but also we weren't, you know, uh, the the real story was kind of a jumping off point for us because it was based on a book around about the real story so we had creative license to imagine a lot of the things about some of these characters that we didn't know you know so so it was kind of amazing to have these reference points and i really i love i tend to over prepare and i love sort of researching and getting into the you know like i'm a choreographer so i had to you know i want i watched you know um films about choreographers and I love that stuff so I I dove into that and and then at the same time we had a great group of writers who was you know imagining the things that we don't know about these characters so I could sort of invent around that as well so it was a really great sort of hybrid thing where you're not held to be to do a great mm -hmm. sort of like replica of the person you can sort of be creative with it so it was kind of it was kind of great to have the reference points but also have some freedom around it you know 
but you have to maintain that. You have to create a character who maintains, who, who stays Nick all the way through. So through the eight episodes, yeah. you know, you don't lose, it doesn't waver. It doesn't, you don't lose focus, which is oh, great yeah. to see, and which really helps you attach to the to character, especially, you know, as we know his uh, untimely ending. Right, right. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, you want to, I mean, by the time you start shooting, you want, I mean, obviously you keep exploring, but you want to like, have a sense by the time you get to set of what the character is and um <clears throat> and what you're bringing and he's such a sort of a broad character in a lot of ways like he's he's sort of larger than life he likes being larger than life so it was mm -hmm. really fun to lean in into that and I, the first two scenes that we did one was uh the first not the first time that that uh steve and nick meet but um after they've met in the club and uh Steve has come to him to, and they meet in a, like a, a, a diner and um, it's a great scene where it's just the two of us and you get to really kind of see the characters and so it was it was lovely to kind of land on that and be able to sort of feel out together who the characters are. It's, it's always a little scary because you're like oh I hope I hope this works or I hope this sort of resonates with the director and and uh, stuff but we just you know we uh there was nerves on that day and then I'm you know I can pretty safely say that most of the rest of the time was just fun you know we just we uh it's a such a roller coaster ride of a story and there's such great characters and we were all really excited to kind of lean into the characters and we you know it's a great group of people so we just we had a ton of fun together now, I was really surprised by it because it's shocking it's kind of this incredible tale it's ultimately sad it's actually very sad and then it's also kind of a business 101 or maybe like a business for dummies uh in the wrong way um what was it about it the series that, that made you want to be part of it um i think it's a really fascinating story about you know about excess about you know um the sort of this uh, the the kind of american dream and how it can go off the rails when it's sort of um becomes about the sort of darker side of capitalism and people get obsessed with like fame and and money and which these two you know these a lot of the characters in the in the show but particularly steve and nick just like this unbridled ambition and no matter how much they got it was never enough and they wanted to one-up each other and i feel like it's sort of it's very um relevant you know i mean where our <laughs> our um world is like burning and we're like sure. i mean it's like we're are we you know are we when are we going to wake up and with you know the the sort of the the landscape of billionaires and all of that and how like it's just it's i think it's a very relevant story to to what we're seeing and what we're living now i think it's also a really interesting different immigrant story of steve Banerjee of um he comes with this incredible dream but it's also comes with a lot of baggage of what he's come from and the, the pressures that are put on him to make something of himself and whatever you know personal sort of insecurities or stuff he's dealing with and and what happens if you do get caught up in the sort of the darker side of the you know american dream or of the sort of the capital sure. dream um you know i i yeah i i I feel like it's very relevant in, in a lot of ways. Um, and also just, it's a surprising story that are not, not a lot of people knew. I think I didn't, I wasn't aware of the sort of this dark underbelly of, of the Chippendale story. Um, and it's, you know, it's the seventies and eighties. It's, it's like, it's a fun period to be in. It's just, the show has got a lot, I think, uh in terms of a, a great story that takes you on a roller coaster ride it's in these like great periods of excess so it's like there's a lot of fun in the sort of 70s and 80s it's the chippendales it's kind of it's got that kind of light fluffy kind of fun side to it all but also balanced out by this real darkness in the story so i i loved that you have that great line i don't know if it's the second last episode or the finale about how steve won you know he had it he just didn't realize it and couldn't stop you know grabbing more he had his share and he could have been he could have walked away and he didn't yeah. um it's, yeah. it's just incredible yeah and you know i mean not to spoil it but i guess i am spoiling it there's a there's a there's a shot right at the end of the show 
that sort of takes us back to the point where everything was amazing. Mm -hmm. And like, what if you just kind of, you know, stayed at that point or, you know, not necessarily plateaued, but just like being like, oh, this is amazing. Let's just like maintain this great thing rather than like becoming just sort of like capitalist monster or this sort of ambitious monster that just is, it's never enough. But, you know, it was a potent combination in the, in the eighties, particularly of like drugs and like, and, and that sort of era of, of sort of excess, you know, that, that was sort of, that was the, the fashion. That was the sort of the thing of the day. Like that's what a lot of people were doing. It was, it was, it was kind of held up as a, as a real sort of thing to sort of, to, to aim for. Um, so yeah, it's, it is a fascinating thing though. It's like that, uh, what is it? I think it's from the Book of the Dead or something. Let's get really sort of esoteric here. Um, the, the hungry ghost of that, that creature with the tiny mouth, but the huge stomach, that's just, it's mm -hmm. never satisfied. Um, you know, we see a lot of those creatures in our world. <laughs> and you know, and those, those creatures are in all of us, right? So it's, I mean, it's a fascinating thing to look at that, to look at those aspects of ourselves, I think, through these characters. Well, I don't think they would, if they looked in the mirror, they would see the reflection as it truly was. They'd see what they want to see. And unfortunately, yeah. you know, the, the the heroes become the villains at times and they don't even know it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it, yeah, especially when you're kind of doing a lot of drugs or whatever, or you just, your your reality is kind of not even doing a lot of drugs, but just like having excess, having everything at your fingertips, mm -hmm. being able to get away with stuff. Like it's sort of, you create this reality that is kind of warped from everyone else's reality and you start your your normal becomes really bizarre you know so then you kind of it justifies leaning further into that i think it's uh it's a kind of a slippery slope i, I want to touch on upon another character you play in which uh really connected with people frank from the last of us just wondering why do you think people reacted to those characters and that storyline as much as they did because it was instantly as it ended online you know I don't know if you're on Twitter and stuff but online they're just like the last of us tears you know just craziness it was just every tweet seemed to be people reacting and reacting uh in a very emotional you know uh emotionally connected way yeah it was really really beautiful for us to feel that because we thought it was beautiful, but you never know how people are going to receive it. And um, that's what you want. You know, you want to like, you want to make people feel things or make people, you know, nudge people's kind of um, boundaries a little bit or, you know, make people think a little more deeply. And, and uh, so it was, it was such a beautiful thing to experience for all of us. Um, you know, I think, I think it was a few things that made it extra special. It was a beautiful script, like just Craig Mazin, you know, one of the creators of the show who also made mm -hmm. Chernobyl, which I think is one of the greatest pieces of television, um, just wrote this incredible script, you know, uh, of containing this relationship over the course of, you know, a couple of decades really, um, and just choosing the moments that we dip into the relationship or where the relationship is in a way that creates this really complete and nuanced picture of a relationship that, you know, you can one minute be in this incredibly loving, like beautiful, intimate scene. And the next minute they're like screaming at each other. I mean, it's a very, it's a very real kind of depiction of a relationship in a way that I think people uh, I really connected to and I think maybe people are like it's it's such a beautifully written story and yet somehow mm -hmm. it manages not to be like saccharine and like um too on the nose like he just and you know we so we all had you know all of us like every department it was we it was a really odd a unique sort of experience where everybody loved that script so much. So there was like reverence in every department for it. And we just, you know, everyone just poured their heart into it really. And 
And that doesn't necessarily mean that something is going to be good. So I, we were, I don't know, there was some magic in it. I think Nick and I really connected, really loved the script, really loved working together. You know, that stuff you can't, you can't manufacture it to a certain extent. I mean, it's acting, but like we had a really great sort of um, uh, working relationship. And so, um, yeah, but I think really the key was that we just loved what we were doing and we had an incredible script with that, which was our map, amazing director. I mean, just like super talented people. And I think for people who started watching the show from the beginning, they had no idea it was coming. So you completely mm -hmm. disarmed. And then suddenly you're in this, like in the middle of this apocalyptic, post-apocalyptic world, suddenly you're in this whole other story that takes a complete left turn and it's a whole episode which sort of feels like its own thing well it kind of is its own story and you haven't got time to judge it or or you know you haven't got time to prepare so you're just like you're disarmed and I, I think that was super clever in the writing especially for some people who may may have you know I don't know, judgments or issues around, you know, queer relationships or whatever. It's, it didn't give you time to like gather your defenses. It's just like, and here you are. <laughs> and they're very, the, the characters are not stereotypes. They're very sort of real authentic characters having a very real authentic relationship. So I, you know, I mean, that's a gazillion things that I've thrown at you, but I think it's a combination yeah. of those things that really, um, well, yeah, it's sort of, it's, it was, I mean, we were just, we were incredibly emotional making it and, and loved it so much. And I think we probably connected to it, connected with it in the yeah. same reasons that other people did watching it, perhaps. I think in the story full of madness and, and chaos and things you can't understand, humanity was just, just on display. And it, you forget that this world, you know, it still exists. You, you do get, you're there, it's, it's present in your back of your mind, but you forget about it and you become so involved in the relationship. No, just in the essence of that episode and in the context of that show is that despite everything, everything can be a, you know, fucking mess and love can triumph and triumph and connection can triumph. Like it can, you know, it's just, you know, it's, it's such a beautiful message, you know, it's that. <laughs> Well, I, I think what you're doing is incredible. Thank you. Uh, Welcome to Chippendales was a, a great surprise for me. Uh, everything you do, you, you're on my radar now. And now going forward, you know, for these last two years, it's if you're involved, I'm watching. So thank you for that. I appreciate uh, it. Let me, let me end with one real quick question. With I'll do both characters. Three words to describe Frank and three for, words to describe Nick. Oh, my God. Three ways to describe Frank. Um... Persistent, um, um, neurotic, <laughs> neurotic, and uh, and emotional, uh, and Nick um, ambitious, uh, uh, ruthless, uh, and a uh, creative genius or creative. Excellent. Well, well, we'll put a hyphen in there. Hyphens always work. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much. Thank uh, you. And best of luck going forward. I can't wait to see what you do next. Thanks, man. Great talking to you. Great talking to you as well. Have a great day. You too.